Thank you. Hello and welcome to the programme. Coming up tonight. The shocking scenes in Southend, how a sunny seaside day ended in violence with one person stabbed, others injured and eight arrested. I've spent the day here finding out the impact of last night's events. Also ahead this evening. Golden day, Londoner Alex Yee wins the men's triathlon and in the water, Richmond's Lola Anderson takes gold with her teammates. Yeah, I'm a bit lost for words and you know, I'm just so grateful to, to everyone who's been in my corner the last three years and you know, that was for them. You kind of get to the end of a cycle like this and it doesn't get bigger than this. It's, it's really quite overwhelming to, to just experience this but be really grateful. Plus, we hear from the Essex residents who fear their mental health has been affected by toxic fumes from a disused landfill site. And holiday help at hand, ideas on how to keep the kids entertained over the summer for free. Good evening to you and also a welcome to BBC Look East viewers who join us due to technical issues. We start tonight with how a sunny day by the sea turned into an evening of violence. One man was stabbed, others injured and eight people arrested in South End on Sea. Essex police have described it as appalling and want to reassure the public that violent disorder will not be tolerated on the city's streets. We can join our reporter Helen Drew for the latest. Helen. Well, this is Southend Seafront. Over my shoulder, Southend Pier, the longest pleasure pier in the world. As we come round, I'm sure you can make out there are still some people in the sea. And as we continue round, we've got one of Southend's many beaches behind me. Now, it's been full here all day of families, of tourists. And just behind us is Adventure Island. Now, it's a small theme park and it was close to there last night that things took a turn for the worse as my colleague Stuart Woodward reports. Large crowds gather along South End Seafront and on the High Street last night. Mostly teenagers and young adults running and screaming, breaking into fights. And then this. Several people dressed in black, brandishing large knives near the Adventure Island theme park, just yards from where children were playing. Eight people were arrested, one person stabbed. The scale of the antisocial behaviour has shocked people in the city. What drives a group of people to come down here and try and stab each other? Oh, I feel totally safe walking down the high street. Daytime. I wouldn't say so much at night. I'm an old East Ender, so the safety-wise, I'm quite confident with myself. But, I mean, I know people that won't come into Southend because of the problems here at the moment. Local traders have told the BBC they tipped off the police that lots of people were heading to Southend last night after this invitation was widely shared on social media which suggests that people should bring their own drugs and nitrous oxide. They're angry that their warnings weren't heeded. I really don't think the police had a good contingency plan. I think they were caught a little bit short, which they shouldn't have been, because they were shared that information. We have a fantastic police force, but it needs to be proactive and not reactive. Essex Police says last night's disturbance was unprecedented and regrettable, and it apologised to local businesses. I'm sorry that they feel let down. We are trying really hard to strike that balance for people to come and enjoy themselves and for us to keep people safe. Um, we had information passed, but it certainly wasn't information passed around drugs or weapons being brought in here. Disturbances over the last two summers have held striking similarities to yesterday's incident, something the local MP is concerned about. This is Southend, this is our city, and we're not happy. We're not happy that this happened here. The people involved were not from South End, so people saw things that they shouldn't have seen. Young children saw things that they shouldn't have seen. Something similar happened last year, and it's happened again today. So, in my mind, that's a bit of a pattern. With another five weeks of summer holidays still left, the people of South End will be hoping that this is a pattern which doesn't continue any further. Stuart Woodward reporting there. Now, last night, Essex Police put a Section 60 dispersal order in place. Now, what that means is it allows uniformed officers to stop and search people without a particular reason, to move them on if they want to. Now, that dispersal order is in place all the way along Marine Parade, which is the seafront behind me, then the high street behind that, all the way up to South End's 
two train stations. It's in place until eight o'clock tonight, but Essex Police just told us that they will have an even more visible presence here over the next few days. OK, Helen, with the latest there from South End on Sea, thanks very much. OK, to the Paris Olympics now. We had Super Saturday in the 2012 Games, didn't we? This feels like a wonderful Wednesday with the Team GB medals coming thick and fast on day five of the Games. Among the gold medalists, Lewisham's Alex Yi, who started out at Crystal Palace Triathletes Club. And that is where we can join our sports reporter, Chris Legg, right now. Uh, another day like this, Chris? Yeah, Riz, on this wonderful Wednesday, not long ago, Alex Yee was just like this, a dedicated youngster at Crystal Palace triathletes. And we'll speak to some of those who run proceedings here in a moment. But let's remind ourselves of the end of that dramatic triathlon. Great. This is how Crystal Palace triathletes members who travelled out to Paris cheered him on. And Crystal Palace triathletes, John from British Triathlon, Harry. This club has helped create an individual Olympic champion. What do those words mean to you? Oh, it's, 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 it's very special, you know, um, to have trained with Alex myself, um, for John, our head coach, to have, have been his first coach. It's, uh, it's pretty special. I mean, what a performance. You, you just can't ask for more. When he went up to collect that gold medal, the national anthem played, did it feel like it was a medal? There's so many people that uh, he, owes, he owes a lot to. John, what a day for British triathlon. Bronze in the women's race for Beth Potter from, from Scotland as, as well. But Alex said after the race, he hopes that someone out there will have seen what's happened today and just want to give this sport a try. That must be magic to your ears. Oh, music to my ears, Chris, music to my ears. Music even, you got it right, yeah, I got it wrong, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, and magic as well. <laughs> it's been superb, a great day. Alex was himself inspired a lot by London 2012. And if some of these young athletes here are inspired by his performance... And anyone else around the country, please get involved. We've got loads of free activities around the country. Uh, if you're inspired by Paris, search Paris Inspired and British Triathlon, and you should be able to find loads of swim, bike, rowing activities, which are free to take part in. And the mixed team event to come still, we are defending champions. How do you rate our chances of, of defending that title? We've got a good chance, haven't we? We've got a good chance. We've got two medalists in the squad. The French are going to be hard to beat on their home soil. It's going to be, if you think today was exciting, Monday's going to be over the top completely. Uh, we can't wait. Thank you, John. Thank you, Harry. And yes, that wasn't the only gold medal today. Just 15 minutes after Alex Yi uh, took gold, this happened. Oh, it felt during the race. <laughs> it always hurts. Um, but George, you've spoken a bit about it earlier. It just felt like a very internal... A deep-rooted belief. First, Indalini Syriax taking bronze. She has a coolness about her in terms of being able to step up and perform. And Lois has had a few issues in the past with putting down some decent performances. But when she stood next to Andrea, it just seems to click and it works. And like I said, unbelievable bronze medal. Hackney's Noah Williams, who won silver alongside Tom Daly, was back at his home training tool this morning. How does it feel, Noah, to have that silver medal around your neck? Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, obviously meddling at the Olympics is a massive goal. And I mean, to do it in the way we did it as well, because I genuinely don't think I could have done any more. And Tom seemed pretty happy. And I think we got an international PB. I'm genuinely over the moon. Like, even though it's silver, I feel like we won. Yasmin Harper. Honestly, this means so much to me. This is really all I've dreamt about since being a kid. So to be up here and standing on that diving board at 24, well, 23, 24, is, it's, it's incredible. GB's medal rush in the diving pool and beyond is unlikely to be over just yet. Yeah, we're very much hoping for more medals in the rowing tomorrow. David Ambler from Shepherds Bush and Freddie Davidson from Barnes. They're old school friends. They went to St Paul's School together. They are half of the men's four team and they have got a real gold medal chance. And in the women's double skulls, Matilda Hodgkins-Byrne, who was born in Westminster, her and Emily Craig have been performing so well. They came into the Olympics without many people talking about them, but they too could feature in the medal hunt now. And we're also hoping perhaps we'll be back here next Monday with another medal in the mixed triathlon when Alex Yee 
will feature again. What a wonderful Wednesday, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. What a summer of sport. Uh, for now, Chris, thank you. And of course, huge congratulations to our Olympic medalists. And we're only halfway through the week. Imagine the proud parents and families. Well, later on, we'll be hearing from swimmer Tom Dean's mum after that historic 200 metre relay win. You're watching BBC London and Look East as we welcome viewers from across the region due to technical issues. Still to come tonight. Holiday help at hand. We bring you some ideas on how to keep the kids entertained over the summer for free. Next, an issue we hear a lot about, housing disrepair in the capital. In fact, you've emailed us about your experiences. Well, the Housing Ombudsman has announced that it's to investigate Lewisham Council over repeated failings with complaints related to leaks, damp and mould. In addition, it has also identified 16 serious failings in how the council dealt with housing issues in the last 12 months. As our correspondent, Carl Mercer, now reports. The radiators were leaking. The, the place were um, moulding, I kept cleaning, I kept cleaning, but what I didn't clean was inside the built-in closet because I didn't know until one day I went in and I, the clothes were soaked. Houses haven't felt like a home for Melissa and her family for eight years. They've been in temporary accommodation across South London. The pictures tell their own story and a story of the failure of Lewisham Council. I know that I have not Damage any property, I have not owed them any money, you know, um, but they have made my life really, really bad. I feel like I'm living in a horror film. They've ruined my life to the point where I, at one point, I felt suicidal. This is where some of the mice came in. Um, the video I showed you is, um, this was here. Good. Look at that, you see them put inside, then eat it up and then put in there. Her new flat has its problems too. Unwelcome visitors that have brought a new set of problems for the family. Just another thing to cope with. Oh god. And it appears Militia and her family aren't alone. The housing ombudsman saying things are so bad in Lewisham that it is to formally investigate the borough, a rarely used power. You had people living for years with damp and mould. You had uh, a baby's cot covered in damp and mould. You had um, people's windows held together with sticking plaster. Um, and that is simply uh, not acceptable. And that sh was an indication that services weren't working. He says Lewisham is starting to turn things round. Delays to repairs, for example, are getting shorter. But the council admits it still has a long way to go. Firstly, what I want to do is apologise for what are clear failings and falling well short of what we want to provide as housing services. We need to do a, a massive overhaul of the way our, we've been dealing with our housing services. It hasn't been good enough, but we are on the right track. And part of us working with the Ombudsman and part of us working with the social housing regulator means that we're held to account on that. Held to account by the regulators and by those they are responsible for housing. Carl Mercer, BBC London. The owner of a former illegal landfill site in Raynham is being urged by the local council to get its planning application submitted so the site can be cleared up. Residents living nearby claim their health has been affected by toxic fumes from the site that stretches over 35 acres, where waste was illegally dumped for two decades before it was sold to the current owners. London Fire Brigade says the underground rubbish is the cause of over 100 fires they've attended in the last five years, as Paul Hawkins reports. I feel like a prisoner, but I'm forced to stay in because mm. it's not healthy for me to be outside. Christine's doctors have told her she can't go outside. A lung cancer survivor, her garden backs onto Arnold's field. When there is smoke, it literally drifts into the back garden. Even though there's no fire, you still see the gases breaking up through the land. A nine-day study by University College London found levels of polluting microparticles called PM2.5 were 70% higher in streets close to the site than in other parts of the borough. Having to stay indoors has an impact on her freedom and her wallet. The cost of running all the electric fans and the air filters 
Khan should take notice. Yeah. You know, he's on the back clean there, charging £12.50. I should charge him £12.50 for my electric bill. The mayor says he's extremely concerned by the situation and is part of a group led by the council who are trying to solve the problem. So what are your questions for the leader of the council? You know, pull your finger out. Which, on Christine's behalf, is exactly what we said to the leader of the council. In terms of pulling our finger out, we've been doing that for the past couple of years. We've got air quality um, nodes right around the whole site. We've been involved in the, uh, the sort of analysis, the soil analysis, knowing what's generally underneath. And also recently we've uh, uh, awarded a contract to a company who will be some, uh, doing some asbestos monitoring. The owners of the site, DMC Services, told us they put in a pre-planning application three and a half years ago to both clean up and develop the site. But all they got back from the council was a letter saying that if they put in a full application, it would be refused. If he believes he has a scheme, um, that's a viable scheme and solves the problem, then there should be no reason why he doesn't put it forward for consideration. What does the future hold for you? I want a future where I can go out um, and do the garden for the community and all that. But at the moment, why this is like this, um, I can't. Do you think that'll ever happen? I don't know. How long's the piece of string? Paul Hawkins, BBC London. Let me bring you a roundup now of some of the day's other stories. A homeless man who pushed a postman in front of an oncoming tube train has been found guilty of attempted murder. 24-year-old Brewa Shursh shoved Tadi Ushpotacek off the southbound Victoria Line platform at Oxford Circus Station on the 3rd of February. Mr Potacek, who was on his way home from work, narrowly missed touching the live rail. A second man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the death of a woman who was found injured while walking her dog in Suffolk. 57-year-old Anita Rose was found unconscious in Brantham last Wednesday. She later died in hospital. A man in his 20s was detained this morning after officers carried out more checks. And the Elizabeth Line has been announced as one of six nominees for the 2024 Reba Sterling Prize for Architecture. It's given to the architect of a building thought to be the most significant of the year. Four out of the six nominees this year are in London. The winner will be announced in mid-October. Now we're into the swing of the school summer holidays, probably much to the delight of many children. However, for some parents, keeping kids entertained for weeks might feel a bit daunting. Well, we're here to help. Alpa Patel has been checking out what you can do for free in London. Would you, would you oh, good girl. Well done, are we going to school? Oh. The summer of fun has begun. But for parents, the cost of activities can be eye-watering. So how can we keep our kids entertained without breaking the bank? Here's one option. Summer of Spurs is putting on free football for all school-aged children. It's a really long time to keep them entertained, especially if you're a working parent as well. Um, you can bring them for a few hours and you can maybe do a bit of work on your phone or work from home as well while they're enjoying themselves. It's really fun and they don't make, like, they don't put like, too much hard work on you. What would you usually <laughs> be doing at home? Um, well, I'd normally be playing, well, I'd be playing on my phone or like talking to my friends. What do you like about football? Um, like when, when you like tackle people and you like do lots of skills. This former professional player says football can also build life skills. There's a real danger that you could actually waste your whole summer just sat in front of a computer screen. I think having this here on their doorstep, I mean, it's an amazing opportunity. And like you say, it's all about being active and hopefully they'll, they'll build that confidence. But if sport isn't your thing or you're looking for a bit of variety, London offers quite a few other options, including here at the Natural History Museum. We've just reopened our amazing gardens and you can step through three billion years of history, past a brand new dinosaur, a bronze diplodocus called Fern, and through to the other side, which is full of wildlife. In the free gardens, we meet Norwegian artist Jana Vinderen, who has co-produced an installation exploring the sounds of the River Thames. 
water is, is the source of life and uh, you know they need to of course be aware and uh, respect what's living centimeters away from us at the tate you can paint and add your brush strokes to this epic story wall at the young vna you can play and go on adventures galore so whatever takes your fancy there's plenty of fun for free in the capital Alpa Patel, BBC London. A few ideas for you there. OK, talking of summer, let's return to the Paris Olympics now. And as we've been hearing, what a day it's been for Team GB. And yesterday, what a night in the pool. Defend their Olympic title. Goal to Great Britain on the men's 4 by 200 metres freestyle route. Yes, gold for the men's freestyle relay, making history, becoming the first four swimmers to successfully defend their Olympic relay title. One of the team is London-born and Berkshire-raised Tom Dean. I managed to catch up with his proud mum, Jackie, in Paris a little earlier, and I asked her, what was it like watching that winning moment poolside? Um, given that I was looking through my fingers, um, in sheer nerves, as if I was watching a scary movie. Um, it was thrilling. It was thrilling. It was completely uplifting. It was joyous. It was uh, it was amazing to be there in person. You know, obviously, I wasn't able to see Tom at Tokyo Olympics when he won his other gold, and nor were any of his siblings. So to be there in the arena and to hear the crowd and to see them in the flesh was just, yeah, it was just uplifting. Yeah. And as you say, because of COVID restrictions, you couldn't be at Tokyo, but you're, you're there, you're poolside. Was there screaming? Was there shouting? Were there tears? <laughs> there was all of that. There was nerves, there was um, anxiety, there was joy, there was hope, there was pretty much the range of emotions. I'm terrible. I, you know, I've watched Tom and his siblings race a thousand times, but it never gets any easier. Um, so I'm always shaking like a leaf. I'm looking <laughs> through my fingers. I can't watch the start on the block. So I'm, I'm taking my cues from the kids around me. And the, the, the noise in the crowd was just insane. I mean, this was an historic moment. You know, no British team has won in any sport put out the same team two Olympics in a row and, and claimed gold. Yeah. No one ever. Absolutely. It was a historic moment as well as a gold winning moment. Um, Jackie, we see the win, the celebration, but of course you see and are part of the journey, the hours, the sacrifices. How are you feeling uh, the day after the night before? Uh, you know, you put, uh, it's so... You're so you feel so vulnerable at that point because as a parent, uh, you know how much has gone into this. You just know the absolute 24-7 slog that goes into this. And, you know, it can go wrong in a hundredth of a second. And so uh, I feel very vulnerable. I feel that they are incredibly exposed. I think if anyone understood the amount of effort and discipline that goes in to getting to that level, and then to performing on the night, honestly, it's awesome. So I'm just so proud of them. <laughs> and rightly so. Lovely to hear from Tom Dean's mum, Jackie, in Paris. Right, it's been wall-to-wall -wall sunshine this week. Whether you love it or are looking for something a little bit cooler, it's over to Stab with all you need to know. Hello. Hello, Riz. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. As Riz said, it's been another very warm and sunny day today. We hit the 30 Celsius mark across the capital. So not as hot as yesterday where we did see 32 degrees, but it's all changed through tonight and into tomorrow. Warm and humid and with increasing chance of some really torrential thundery downpours. Met off his warnings in force. Could see just a couple spreading uh, across the region through this evening and overnight, particularly towards the southeast. Very hit and miss. Many places should stay dry and it will be another warm and muggy one. Same two for East Anglia, which will see temperatures no lower than around 15 to 17 degrees. Certainly very warm across the uh, centre of the capital. So this feature running across the Midlands is what's going to generate some really big thunderstorms and showers tonight through the Midlands. This may clip uh, northern and uh, western parts of East Anglia through the morning. So some torrential downpours there, risk of localised flooding across our patch. I don't think too badly we could see uh, maybe the odd shower through the morning 
plenty of sunshine around it will be very humid and then into the afternoon we'll start to see these thunderstorms developing pretty widely hit and miss it's difficult to pinpoint exactly where but if you catch one it really will know about it 28 or 29 degrees again high humidity similar values for Norwich around 27 or 28 degrees but cooler along uh, the coast of both Norfolk and Suffolk thanks an onshore breeze this is going to be the game changer this cold front moving in with low pressure for the weekend before we reach that point though for Friday it looks like it'll be another largely warm and humid day Start to see showers and thunderstorms develop from midday onwards across our region and into East Anglia, increasingly so into the evening there. Again, could see some uh, torrential downpours. No warnings uh, yet for these. They could be issued and on, but at the moment it's going to be another warm and humid day, 28 or 29 degrees. Similar values again across East Anglia for Norwich, 28, 29 Celsius. But then it's all changed with the weekend. That cold front moves through, will bring a spell of rain for both East Anglia and the southeast of England. And then as it moves through, it'll introduce fresher air, plenty of sunshine through the week, the odd shower with temperatures closer to the seasonal norm, both by day and by night, Riz. OK, Stav, thanks for the latest. And that is where I leave you, so thanks for watching. Never take that for granted. Uh, plenty more local news from where you live on the BBC News website or news app. And after today's medal so far, coverage of the Paris Olympics follows here on BBC One and iPlayer. But from me and all the team, whatever you're doing, enjoy your evening. Bye-bye.